Hey Bulls and Bears, what is happening? Hope you are well. Today is Monday. It is July 10th, 2023. Got quite a bit of news to get caught up on here today. Uh, let's start with the markets. The stock market today finally breaking a three-day losing streak. We're talking about the Dow Jones. Other indexes similar. Uh, all indexes in the green today. So what What's the good news? What's making stocks go to the green? Well, you please let me know down in the comments because there's not much great news out there. In fact, uh, we're talking about an earnings recession uh, that's actually taking place right now. This is out of Yahoo. The earnings recession is here. It's about to get even worse, but yet investors are optimistic about the stock market. Maybe you can let me know how that works. Uh, I think it's more manipulation, more uh, money printing behind the scenes to keep these markets propped up. We're going to talk about car prices here in a minute. Uh, car prices took their biggest drop, their biggest drop uh, from May to June. And uh, used car prices are now down 10% year over year. Now, I talked in my last video about how I bought a car recently. I got a super good deal. Um, I'll let you in on a little bit about that. Nobody wanted this car because it had a recall. It had a recall. So people were scared away because of the recall. I looked into the recall, it was only a hood latch that was the recall. Simple fix, nothing with the electrical system. If it would have been an electrical system or something else, you know, more intricate, I would not have bought the vehicle. But I got this vehicle thousands of dollars less than the average uh, vehicle. Anyways, that's why I bought the car. And I want to mention that because the next article here that I'm going to talk about, the next data, is the price decline in cars. And there's some interesting articles coming out here about this. Now, first of all, prices dropped from May to June, and that was a record drop from one month to the next. So things are beginning, and just like I said, the second half, 2023, is going to be the uh, time frame, the time period to look out for, and things are already playing out here, just like we talked about. We only entered the second uh, half of the year uh, less than two weeks ago, but we're already seeing data like this. So now vehicles are down 10% year over year. Those are used vehicles. New vehicles, a bit more sticky. Uh, a lot of dealers are offering better APRs for new vehicles, um, plus the supply uh, issues and the production issues. Anyways, used car prices down. So why would I buy now? Well, I told you about the especially the special good deal that I got, right? But prices are going to drop even more. But listen to this article out of CNBC. Used car prices expected to stabilize. I don't believe that, do you? Uh, following major decline in June. So they're already trying to put the Band-Aid on this. Uh, trying to cover up for the fact that the used car market's beginning to see major corrections. I think this is just the beginning. And um, wholesale used car prices, it talks about the price decline. Um, a big one. Why would prices stabilize now when we're in prime buying season for the vehicles? Remember, the kids get out of school, new drivers, they want to get their first car. Uh, the summertime is typically the busiest time for people traveling, buying new cars, upgrading their car. Let's take a few seconds to talk about protecting your wealth. The U.S. dollar has lost 90% of its value since the 70s when the dollar was decoupled from gold. And the government seems bent on continuing the tradition. From now until the next elections, the government can print as much money as it wants. The last time they did that, inflation went up by 9%. This means one thing, the security of your future and your family's future is in your hands. Make sure you freeze the value of the wealth that you're holding. Invest in gold with Noble Gold Investments. Gold is the one asset that has proven to withstand recession, inflation, and just about every other economic threat. Noble Gold Investments is here to help you if you want to invest in gold. You'll also get a free 24 karat quarter ounce gold standard coin for free. Go to bullboomgold.com. That's bullboomgold.com. Noble Gold, the only gold company that I trust. There's always a risk of investment and there's no guarantees of any kind. Why would we see... The market stabilized now why would we see prices stop falling now if anything i think the price declines are going to accelerate i think next month is probably going to be more than the 4.2 uh from month to month decline i think we're going to see five and six percent and then worse and worse and worse as we get into the end of the year now another uh wild card that's out there is the war situation over in china and the number one chip manufacturer in the world, Taiwan. If we see disruptions in Taiwan or a war, 
Um, we've got headlines here out of the Telegraph. China is preparing for war. Um, uh, ships off the coast of Taiwan. If we see disruptions in the supply chain, especially more chip uh, with the chips and the vehicles, we could see car prices go back up again. I'm hoping that doesn't happen, but that's another reason why I decided to go ahead and buy now, uh, buy a vehicle now, especially with uh, the really, really good deal that I got, you know, thousands of dollars below uh, the value. I think that if this war doesn't happen, if the supply chains don't get disrupted, that um, you know, prices will continue to fall. But I just wanted to put that out there as my rationale or reasoning behind buying a vehicle now when we know that prices are likely going to decline even further uh, headed into the months ahead and, and uh, throughout 2023. And I think if things continue to decline, if we don't see a big you know, shutdown again, supply chains freeze up and all that stuff, kind of like we saw in 2020, I think prices will continue to soften because people are now getting repossessions. Uh, repossessions are picking up and... Um, you know, the direction is definitely down for car prices. All right, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the next bit of news here. Got this here out of the Financial Times. Big U.S. banks to post the largest rise in loan losses since the onset of the health crisis 2020. But yet the markets are up today. Uh, I think we're seeing a lot of uh, a false optimism here. And I think even the news that's coming out is uh, trying is purposely trying to paint a rosier picture for the economy and it's going to fool a lot of people into uh, thinking that everything's fine when we're going to see layoffs accelerate, we're going to see job losses accelerate, the unemployment rate, even the manipulated unemployment rate number is going to rise because even a manipulated number uh, compared to another manipulated number does show a trend uh, and we're going to see that number go up, unemployment's going to go up and uh, more people losing their jobs, more layoffs, more people getting repossessed, foreclosures are increasing, things are starting to uh, pick up speed here. Finally, uh, after all the uh, all the free money that was given out over the past few years, we're finally starting to see people get tapped out, more people panic selling their gold and silver, according to a gold buyer friend of mine. Uh, pawn shops, seeing more people looking to pawn items. I think you're going to start seeing a lot more uh, yard sales, estate sales as people try to liquidate. And after that money's gone, then what's it going to be? It's going to be more late rents, more foreclosures. Uh, maybe they'll have to re-implement some of these rescue programs, freezing rents, freezing foreclosures. We'll have to see, but that's what I see happening here so far. Next, so let's talk about electric cars. We saw this huge, huge push towards electric cars. And uh, nothing against people that bought them. People are saving a lot of money on gas. I could definitely see you know, the reasoning behind it, especially here in California. But look at the big picture, and we've been talking about this here for a couple years now. The power grid is under strain each year, especially here in California. And listen to this. This is out of the Telegraph. The current administration's electric vehicle push is doomed. That's the headline, doomed to fail, warns car maker. And this is the... Toyota owner, the owner of Toyota, he said that the current administration was being overly optimistic when it came to the push towards electric vehicles. And listen to the reason, exactly what we've been talking about here for a while now. Um, the U.S. charging infrastructure is creating disastrous supply shortages. There's a rush for companies to get lithium and other minerals needed to make the batteries for these cars. Right, so we're having issues already with the electric car manufacturing. We know the infrastructure is uh, inadequate to say the least, especially in certain states like here in California, where every year they say, "Don't run your washer and dryer during these hours. Don't turn on your air conditioning over, uh, I forget the number, 70 degrees or something like that." Um, so right, craziness. But we knew uh, we knew this was coming. So now we have uh, car manufacturers and the owners of these uh, companies. You know, coming out and saying, hey, not so fast. You know, uh, we're being too optimistic with this push towards electric vehicles. No surprise to any of you, I'm sure, if you've been on this channel. Next, out of Benzinga, let's talk about Bud Light. Everybody's least favorite beer now, or at least many people's least favorite beer. Uh, Bud Light glass bottling companies are shutting down and laying people off now. So this boycott has turned into more layoffs right so add these layoffs on top of the pile that's already big uh and it's no laughing matter especially for someone that's getting laid off but you know you almost have to kind of sit back and wonder about these things like how many people that got laid off 
were participating in the boycott. So now you have people that basically shot their own self in the foot and are getting laid off. Now the question is, if people are ditching one beer for a different one, it seems like another beer company that saw increased sales would just have to hire more people uh, to keep up with the added demand uh, for the other beers. The big thing that I've always said here is if you look at the parent company, Anheuser-Busch, they own about 140 different beers. So a lot of people are ditching what the beer they're trying to boycott for another beer that's made by the same company. Uh, so they're really, the, the company's just laughing all, all the way to the bank. Now, Bush's stock is down pretty big, so they are taking a hit. Um, but anyways, interesting. We see layoffs now, and uh, will we see these stocks continue to plunge uh, for this beer maker? Now, one thing additional really quick on the uh, Anheuser-Busch stock. Many of you people know that I like to uh, what's called dip buy, dip buy stocks. And when I see a big sell-off in a company that's pretty uh, reputable or well-known, I like to buy up stock on the cheap. I don't think it's a buying opportunity right now for uh, for Bush InBev at all, which is a, the parent company of uh, Bud Light. In fact, if you look at their stock, it's been dropping since 2016. In September 2016, we were at about $125 for that stock. Uh, the one-year high in the past year here was about $66 for uh, the parent company there of Bud Light. And uh, now we're only down to $55, right? So for, we're only about $10 off of the one-year high for the stock, so I wouldn't be buying now. I'd have to see the stock get down to about a 90% drop before I would feel comfortable dip buying. Now, some traders out there listening to this may be laughing at me, but I like to buy only when I'm um, very sure, when I'm 99% sure or positive that I'm going to see a gain. After a 90% sell-off, if it's a company that's reputable and that's unlikely to go under, um, your chances of losing money are very small, even if it drops a little bit more. If you just sit and hold it, you're likely going to see upside in the future, right? Unless all you know what breaks loose and everything sells off, you know, but that's the worst scenario or the, uh, you know, the surprise situation uh, scenario that could pop up anytime, you know, with the, uh, the Black Swan event, etc. Let's talk about more pain in the retail sector. New York City, a little bar and grill called Margaritaville. I can hear Jimmy Buffett playing in the background right now. Something like closing down Margaritaville. All right, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna scare you like that. Uh, New York City Margaritaville owner files for bankruptcy ahead of foreclosure. Some people claim there's a woman to blame. No, it's actually the work at home situation. Traffic at this place has severely declined. Uh, a lot of people used to go to work in downtown and get off of work or maybe even at their lunch break, which shouldn't shouldn't drink at lunch, naughty naughty. They used to go to this bar, but now traffic has uh, dried up so much, they are going to be going out of business there in Margaritaville. Uh, don't tell Jimmy Buffett. Let's talk about this. Uh, this is out of Smart Asset. Smart Asset. Americans' magic number for retirement rises to record high. Now, hopefully that'll change uh, going into the end of the year here as we see some things become more affordable. Hopefully homes, hopefully automobiles become more affordable and prices continue to drop. But based on the current cost of living and how much the average person feels like they need to have put away for retirement, uh, here's what we're looking at now. Uh, according to this survey, Americans believe they need about $1.3 million to retire um, comfortably and not have to worry about going back to work. $1.3 million. So you're in your 60s, you have, let's say, $500,000 put away. But the way things are going right now, people with $500,000, which is a nice amount of savings, people with that, even a million dollars, people with a million dollars are not comfortable that their money will outlast their life, right? So pretty disturbing. A million dollars used to seem like you made it. If you had a million dollars, you're successful, you made it. Now people aren't even confident that a million dollars is going to last them the 10, 20, 30 years, whatever, into retirement, right? How insane is this, folks? We need a massive deflationary situation uh, with all the money creation going on right now. Will that happen? Please let me know what you think down in comments. I continue to stack, continue to hedge for inflation, keep some cash on the sidelines for better buying opportunities down the road. That's what I have planned for real estate. 
Uh, yes, I bought a vehicle uh, because of the situation that I talked about earlier. Real estate, I'm definitely holding off. Even if I got a super good deal, I'm still holding off on real estate. Um, so anyways, please let me know what you think down in the comments. We're going to wrap this one up. Big love, everybody. Peace. Bye for now. Keep stacking. Bye.